the basil of the house, the caring, sensible, loving wife, the first woman to embrace Islam, the mother of the believers, Khadija bint Khwailid. The caravans came back to Mecca, carrying types of goods, food, fruits, perfumes, clothes, jewelry, etc. Among them, Khwailid's and Atiq's trades. The most luxurious things of them were those vivid clothes, wonderful utensils, beautiful tapestry rugs, precious Persian carpets, and different types of perfumes and mattress, which Khwailid recommended to be carried with Khadija to Atiq's house, and which Atiq recommended to be sent as a present to his bride. All people of Mecca were waiting for the wedding. The poor were waiting for and urging on it, hoping for fat sacrifices that would be slaughtered and their meat they would gain, cooked or uncooked. The youths were waiting for it. The youths who used to play with swords at night, showing types of their knighthood, kinds of their abilities and skills, and their artfulness in stepping and beating and in fight or flight. They were getting drinks and blessing talks as they usually did in such nights that the rich of Mecca used to have when they celebrated their sons' and daughters' weddings to announce their happiness and joys. The elderly were waiting for it. The elderly who did not deprive themselves of what they use got in such nights. They were waiting for it to perform a duty towards Khwailid and to return his compliment to them on occasions like that one. Also people other than those and those were waiting for it. They were those who bore a grudge against Atiq as he won Khadija. So they wanted to show that their souls were serene, not altered by anything, although their hearts were about to burn. And just as men were waiting for it, women were waiting for it as well. Every one of them prepared her best clothes and the most beautiful adornment to have an appearance among women that suited her rank and wealth. Some other women were waiting for it to pay their debt to Fatima, Khadija's mother, as she did not miss participating in any occasion in which she either congratulated them for their joys and gave them presents, or she consoled them for the sadness and helped them. Every one of them was thinking of giving a precious present to the bride, as her mother gave them and their daughters. And with those and those were the servants of al Kaaba, who used to get a lot of good upon the marriage of the rich. They were preparing al Kaaba for that night, in which God would bless the marriage kinship of Bani Makhzum and Bani Asad. Gifts and givings would be scattered on them, and the hands of those wealthy people would be generous to them on that happy night. As for Fatima, Umm Khadija, she was busy preparing the trousseau and organizing what was required on the wedding night. She was thinking of the minor and major things and drawing in her mind the new nest of her daughter and what suited it and what suited the daughter of the rich Khwailid. She used to think for a long time so that she did not miss a thing which may have led people to say that Khadija's trousseau was less than that of the brides like her. And Khadija was thinking of her new life, what she would bear of duties and burdens, and what would guarantee her happiness and make her avoid things in which some unsuccessful wives fell. She was studying their mistakes, concluding the lesson from them, and drawing the straight path. As for her maids, they were extremely happy for her. 
they were going and coming thinking. Every one of them liked to sing a happiness song in her mother tongue. So there were many voices in the house and different types of accents, which increased happiness and joy in it. Whenever one of them approached Khadija, she raised her voice in singing her song, expressing joy for her beloved lady. Each of them hoped that Khadija would choose her and take her to her new house. Khadija was turning her gaze at her father's spacious house and staring at every side of it. Then her imagination was moving to that new house she did not know, and the new spouse she was not used to. So her heart became more worried. Then she encouraged herself, pushed her fears away, and said to herself in a whisper her ears could hear, Why am I afraid of the future? The future is in Allah's hand, and what is required of me? Marriage is cooperation between a husband and his wife, and I will cooperate with my husband. I will be his servant, and with my submission to him, I will make him my servant. I will be keen on his satisfaction, and I will safeguard his money and family. She was silent for a while. Then again, in determination and strength, she talked to herself, saying, and why am I afraid? Aren't I trained on housework and house management in my father's house? I will use what I learned in managing my husband's house. I have a mind, awareness, and understanding. So why will I make my husband angry? Why will I cause problems to occur and make his life miserable? Then she reviewed the life of many girls who did not succeed in their marriage and blamed them because they could not make their husbands comfortable and they did not know why they got married. Reviewing all of that, she felt satisfied with herself, with the future, and with the wedding that was coming soon. And her mother did not leave a chance but talked to her about the wife's duties and taught her what to take and what to leave. She made these days like a school in which she summed up all the lessons that the girl should be told, which made her aware of her future and lightened the way before her, in addition to what she had previously taught her. So Khadija felt more comfortable and tranquil, because her mother's saying was the same as what she intended to do, what she decided to take, and what she drew for herself when she drew her future and her new life. When the wedding day came, Khwailid's house was filled with the female relatives and friends. The women of Bani Makhzum came, carrying the precious presents which Atiq had sent and the women of Quraysh came, carrying the expensive presents they had prepared. Animals were slaughtered, and the people of Mecca were invited to the banquets that would be given in Khwailid's house. The elegant singing came from the house, and the female hairdressers started adorning the bride, adding beauty to her beauty. The day was nice with a gentle breeze. The whole Mecca spent it in a continuous movement from Khwailid's house and to it. Till the evening came, so the marriage contract was concluded beside al kaaba Then the people compassed around it, thanking Allah and invoking Him. Trills set out Khwailid's house spreading in Mecca and delighting the family and loved ones. When they ate the delicious food, they moved to the night chat. They turned around, forming a big ring, in which the leaders of Mecca were in the front and the heroes were in the middle. They turned behind each other, 
hit and ran, jumped, beat, and avoided beats. The people cheered to the victors and clapped for them. The defeated stood drying their sweat, weaving their swords, replying by their eyes to the looks of those who pitied them, and getting ready for the second round, insisting on blotting the shame of the defeat. The laughs broke out loudly, and everyone participated in this joy, except one man was sitting in silence. If he was invited to drink, he wouldn't accept, and if he was directed to the singing and dancing, he would turn away from looking and listening. But we will leave the story of that man for the next episode.